Hello YouTube and thanks for tuning in for today's video. In this video, we want to cover the basics of stacks. So the ideal audience would be someone who has a coding interview coming up and want to get a quick summary on stacks. Or if you are a complete beginner, then also you will find videos on our coding interview playlist pretty helpful. And since you're already here, so if you find this video helpful, please help us support our channel by clicking that subscribe button and that little bell icon never miss out on another video by us on our interview preparation. So let's get started. So in this video, we will go over what stack is, how we use it in different scenarios, what are its pros and cons, and how to evaluate the use of stacks while solving the coding interview questions. And we will also see two lead code problems just to help you guys understand what stack really is and then how to use them in a real world example. If you like, you can jump around the video we have the timestamps for you to specific sections in the description or in the comment below. So stack data structures is inspired from stacks of things in real world, like stacks of pancakes, or stacks of coins or plates. Uh, stacks can be of uh, similar types or dissimilar type. It doesn't really matter in the computer world. And uh, the main thing to remember in stack is that uh, the order in which we are inserting those items and uh, removing those items. So it should be last and first out. So what do we mean by last and first out is basically that uh, while we are inserting the new elements, so let's say three uh, goes to the top of the stack and then four that goes again top of the stack. So this is what we call last in goes first in and uh, first out means uh, is just uh, whenever we are popping those four will go out first and then we'll have to take out three so that means the same for the elements that have, we have to pop out. So four will go out first and then we'll have to take out three in after that. And then only we can take out two and in the end when all the elements are popped out of the stack, then we'll get the empty stack in the end. Now let's look at the important APIs that you guys need to remember for solving these stacks questions. So first important API is push, which is basically takes the item and pushes that item on the tour top of the stack. Then uh, we'll have the pop, uh, another API that basically helps us remove the object from the top of the stack and uh, returns that object in the end. Another uh, important function is peak. And this one helps us to just get the top element of the stack without removing it. So it's different from pop in that functionality. And uh, the last important function is empty. So whenever like you are iterating over the stack and you want to see that if you have hit the bottom of the stack or not, you might want to check empty before doing that pop operation again and again. Now we think this is a good enough overview to anyone who is not familiar with the stacks. I think the best way to build more understanding is to go over some of the lead code questions. Uh, we know that seeing about 1200 or more questions on lead code might overwhelm you. Uh, but that's where like we have uh, did our research and handpicked and shortlisted some of the best questions that cover both breadth and depth and different levels for you guys to help with your coding interview. So let's first look at the first problem of uh, the day, which is simplify path. So in this question, basically, you can also find this on the LinkedIn. We have given the link for you in this uh, slide only. So uh, as we can see in this question, we have to basically uh, for a given absolute path uh, for a file, we have to simplify it or canonicalize it. So what do we really mean? when we say canonicalization of a path. So in Unix file system, basically you have these special characters, which is like single dot or double dot, which have different meanings. So single dot gives you the current directory and uh, double dot will take you one directory up off from that level. And uh, single slash is just a separator between different directories. But if it is used in the first place, then it becomes root. So you can go over this description uh, by pausing this video here if you want. Uh, but let's uh, see what are some of the examples of uh, simplifying the path in this question. So for the first example is pretty simple, straightforward, like you have slash home slash. So this is the input given to you. And uh, what happens is you can notice here that this uh, last slash and this uh, input string is superfluous. We can just ignore it. And then this will be our output path that we have to return as part of the code that we will write. So first uh, slash is important because it gives us the idea that this is starting from the root in a Unix file system, but last slash has no meaning for us. Uh, let's look at one of the complex examples for this question. So 
here you can see that this is the input path that we are given and uh, these are basically directories a b and c uh, and in between we have like these double dots and single dots uh, present between these directories so what will happen is like when we will apply this code uh, to simplify the path we are basically getting this slash c in the end because uh, if you'll see so first double dot will basically go up the directory of a so we will land up at root then we will try to again go up directory with this double dot when we are already at root so it won't like yield into any meaningful action so it will just get ignored after that we will go into b directory so uh, once we get there and then next thing we read is that we want to go back one level up so we did that and then we will find that we are again at slash which is root and in the end we want to get into c and then we can ignore the rest of us because know that uh, these mean nothing to us in this current example so what we want is that you to give us give it a thought and uh, see how you would solve this question and then we will pick it from there and so show you what the correct solution is so yeah take your time pause the video so i hope you guys did your due diligence now let's see how would we would approach this question so let's first take the brute force approach so in this brute force approach uh, we are given this input string so what we will do is like we will just uh, read character by character by having like some special meanings as we have seen in the question itself that uh, first slash is just root so we won't do any action on that then we'll see that what the directory names are and then uh, give a special meaning to this slash which is, acts as a delimiter between these directories and uh, also more special meanings to double dots and single dot in terms of uh, uh, taking the last directory out from that uh, resulting string or not so so we will just like as you can see read character by character and then have this if else uh, kind of uh, thing going on for us to make sense that if you want to have the directory in the current resulting string or not but as you can see that this is getting out of hands pretty easily so we would end up with a very complex approach uh, which would not be that structured or systematic so we want to do a little bit better than just have a brute force approach and that's where the solution with the stacks really come into the picture so what we want to do while doing this question with the stacks is that we want to first split the entire input string into the elements or like the directories or different uh, symbols that we want to have so what we did is like we, we can just simply apply this strings dot split function uh, which is in java i am pretty sure that this is also available in c++ or python to split the entire input string using the delimiter uh, into a array of uh, strings so what we will end up is that uh, all the directories and double dots and single dots will end up being the elements in this array uh, as a strings and what we want to do is that now we can just like go element by element and put them into stacks one by one in a last and first out order which is for stack to maintain that what is the top element or what are the elements in the stack and then we can just pop them out as we see double dot or single dots appropriately so let's run through one example here so let's say that we have this first element as a uh, which is a directory name and we can just put it in the stack so now the current stack state is basically a as the top element in the stack then next we see that uh, we got double dots and we see that a is the only element uh, on top of the stack so we just pop, pop that out and uh, we end up with the empty stack next uh, we see another double dot again we can't pop anything so we just uh, end up with the empty stack now at this point we got b so we put the b just uh, plain and simple again double dot so we pop the b out then c we pop we push c in and then in the end we can just ignore this single dot because that just means that it's the current directory so we don't have to do anything so in the end what we want to do is that when we end up with this stack to print out the path we have to do some more post processing after it so if you will see like let's say some more elements were here like d e f so you will end up with like d then on top of it we e and then on the the topmost element would be f so when you will pop out those elements one by one so like f e d c those were not in the order that they were given to us in the path so what we have to do is like return this uh, resulting stack into another stack and then we can be sure that the topmost element that we are getting is the parent of all those uh, lower elements in the stack so let's just quickly look at the code and it will make more sense while we were going through it so as you can see in this code that first we split the entire path 
with the delimiter slash into an array of strings so that we will get all this uh, elements uh, in the array in the first place. After that, we will just instantiate the stack uh, of the strings uh, into uh, this variable stack. And then what we have to do is here is that we just uh, uh, iterate over all the stack elements or all, all the array elements so uh, that we have uh, got in this a variable so first we are checking that if it is a single dot or a, like empty character we can just like continue or like do nothing about it so we are just ignoring these characters but whenever we get like two double dots in the uh, array we, we will just have to check that we are not empty in the stack like in this scenario where we were already empty and we got double dot so we will just ignore that or and then we will just pop out one element from the top of the stack and we will just uh, continue after that because we don't need to store anything at this point after that when we are done with like both the conditions and we don't have any other special character in our string we just have to push the directory name into the top of the stack that's what we are doing here so we will just do keep on doing it until we hit the end of the array or like we exhaust all the elements from the input string or input path then as we have seen like uh, when I was giving the example that we have like more characters or more directory names here, so D, E, F. So first we have to reverse the remaining elements from the stack and then we will get the path in the correct order. So that's what we were doing here. We're basically reversing the entire stack with all the elements that were left after doing this processing. And then once we are left with that reverse stack, we will just uh, pop out all the elements and then put that into a string builder and then return that string as our final output or result after doing that let's just see what the time complexity or space complexity for this entire solution so that you would be able to justify that why this is the best solution that you came up with so as you can see that we are doing this solution in the linear complexity that we own only going through each element one by one so that gives us on of time complexity and our solution is linear uh, we might see that if it is better to do it in logarithmic uh, time complexity so if you have uh, seen or done this solution in logarithmic do let us know down in the comment section we would love to know if we have missed it uh, in terms of space complexity we are only using on here because uh, first we are using this stack then uh, we are using another stack as uh, extra space so that would give us like o of uh, two times n because we are using it twice to store the elements but uh, since two times n is only n so we end up with this approximation uh, of space time complexity as o n. in case you are new to this whole big time big o complexity concept so just go on to youtube or google and see what really this thing means uh, i think it's pretty basic so you should know on your own so we won't dive too much deep but do let us know down in the comment section if you want us to do a quick video on big o time complexity we can totally do that now let's look at the next question of the video which is uh, finding the daily temperatures or like the warmest daily temperature at that point of time so let's first read out the question you can also go to the lead code link we have put this in the uh, slide itself so if you want to solve it in the real time you can do that as well so first let's look at the question so basically we are given a list of daily temperatures and uh, what we have to do is like we have to find out that how many days it would take for uh, from that day to get to a warmer temperature uh, and if there are no warmer temperature in the future days we just print out zero so let's work out like first example here so let's say that uh, we are given these like uh, array of uh, temperatures so for 73 the warmer temperature is definitely 74 so within a day we got to the warmer temperature as we can see the output is one for this place same goes for 74 since 75 is warmer for 74 so we put it here after that once we put have uh, once we have the 75 the only warmer temperature then 75 is 76 which is four places ahead of 75 so that's what we have put here then uh, 71 uh, has warmer temperature as 72 so that's two places ahead of it 69 just one and 72 is smaller than 76 so that makes it also one but there is nothing warmer than 76 and 73 so we put zeros in their places so again as we have done in the last question uh do pause the video think for yourself like uh, how would you do it definitely has to do something with stacks but we want you to think uh like for a couple of minutes first uh, before we go into our solution how we did it so i hope you guys did your due diligence Again, as we did in the last question, we have to maintain a stack and then one by one put all these uh, temperatures in that stack only. So let's see that uh, first we have this 73 as our like first temperature. So we take 
take that and like put that on to our top of the stack next we have 74 and we will check like if 74 is greater than 73 or like the whatever the top element of the stack is if it is then we will just uh, uh, subtract out the uh, or take the difference of the of the elements uh, position uh, in the array and uh, put that in the resulting array and uh, we do uh, that for like each element from left to right uh, once we have like uh, let's say 75 we did the same thing we pop out 74 put the 75 in and uh, same goes again we have 71 since we can't pop 75 out because 75 is greater than 71 we will put that in the top of the stack next we get 69 in the place so again it is smaller than 71 we push that into the stack in the end we have 72 so that is greater than both 69 and 71 uh, 72 is like one place ahead of 69 so we put one in the resulting array and then two places ahead of 71 so again we did that in the end uh, we put 72 since 75 is greater than 72 it can't pop 75 out from the stack so if we put 72 back in uh, with 75 as the top element now as we have seen 76 in this case we basically pop out both 72 and 75 find the difference out and put that in the resulting array so in the end we will end up with the existing solution which we have for the question basically uh one one four two one one zero so let's quickly check out the code i think it would make more sense to see the code actually that what it is doing one by one but Overall, generally, you will see that the stack is helping us in this uh, uh, sort of storing the all the elements until they will have their warmer element uh, found out in the input array. So as you can see, like the code is pretty simple, pretty short. Uh, what we are doing here is like first we are giving this like uh, input temperature array. Then uh, what we are doing is like we are just uh, instantiating a stack. And then uh, what we did is basically creating another result array since we want to separate that out. And what we are doing here is that we are reading the elements or the temperatures one by one from left to right using this zero index to end of the uh, array. And what we are doing is like we are first checking that if uh, the stack is not empty here uh, so that uh, we can just compare like the top element which is stack dot peak uh, and uh, if it is like lesser than or uh, lesser if it is lesser than the current element uh, in the temperature survey if it is then we get into this uh, while section where basically we just pop out all the top elements uh, until we find the one where basically this is greater than the uh, like the the top of the stack is greater than the current element and what we did is basically we just uh, add that uh, position in the resulting array we just uh, put the difference between the current uh, position and the position of the top element in the stack so as you can see in the end we just like push that element which we currently have seen into the top of the stack and then we just keep on going until we hit the end now you are wondering like uh, how would we take care of the case where like uh, there were no more temperatures left which were greater than the current temperature or like the remaining temperature in case of like 73 or 76 so that's the beauty of uh, using or initializing the resulting array upfront is basically all the elements were already zero in the first place so that's what we will return in the resulting array is that we will only return the non-zero values for things we have processed but something which we haven't processed during this uh, for loop it will just be returned as zero so we don't have to worry about that now the complexity analysis since we are only getting through each element one by one any other time so you can like imagine that this is only going one by one so that's why we have only o n times complexity in terms of the space complexity we have o n since we are using extra space as for stack we won't count the resulting space uh, as extra space because we have to return that only so we only count this as like the one which we have to use to assist us into getting the result so that's about it i hope you guys learned a fair bit about stacks we purposefully kept this video beginner friendly and covered only easy to medium questions in this video if you like the video and want to support our cause don't forget to drop us a like and share this video with your friends also press the subscribe button with the little bell icon on the side so that youtube shows update for our future videos also stay tuned for our next video to prep more on the coding interview and build intuition to solve more lead code questions till then Thanks for watching and keep prepping.